in my mind You'll never be satisfied Blame the divine Eventually they'll find the time And what if I, what if I believe you Or what if I
Welcome to Whiskey Oval underscore TV. Completely packed house here at Volusia. War, War Horse Dirt Car Series presented by uh, Diggs by Dirt One. And man, I'm excited. Pro Dirt Late, late Models, Volusia Motor uh, Speedway Park. Long, a se a long season, a 14 weeks season. And we're on race uh, number one. Going to be a blast. Top four drivers go straight to the Mac Daddy Show. And we'll see how everything plays out. Gonna make sure I got everything just right here on my end. Engine volume's up just right. Mic volume's good. We're ready to rock and roll. Here's a grid. Warhorse. Dirt car at series, a guy that's on uh, the random, the random pole. There was no qualifying. Jason Korn, the number 82 machine. He'll be on on that top spot with Scott Smith, the number 53 machine to his outside. You have Larry with Hood Up Motorsports, a 38 machine, just making up the second row with uh, Jesse Wall there to his outside. Brandon Freeberg will make will be starting the third row with uh, Travis, the number 13 machine, a driver out of Ohio. We starting there in that sixth spot. James seventh and John, another hood up motorsports driver, two teammates in uh, heat race number one, be starting eighth place. Thomas Vickers and Trent, Daniel and Desmond making up those last and final two a row. So let's get ready to stack them up, pack them up. Green, a flag will be waving shortly. The pace truck be making that hard left hand corner. And Volusia Motorsport or Speedway Park is about to come to life. one is off to the races and Jason Korn I believe led that lap. Jason Korn driver on the high side that black a little bit of pink car right uh, ripping the lip around the cushion but right now Scott Smith is going to try to edge him out at, at the line and Scott Smith does. They're all the way down to the bottom side of part of the racetrack racing all the way around this racetrack 12 cars only four cars are going to make their night a little bit easier and go straight to the Mac Daddy show hold on to it kids bunch of beating and banging back, back there Travis and Claire got the short end of, of, of the stick on, on that one lap four of ten as they drag race down the back stretch Jason Korn still trying to hold off the pack of hungry hounds and Scott Smith is trying to make this bottom side work. Sitting there in that third spot, Jesse Wall, right there in the fourth spot. Good battle up for the race lead. These drivers have been side by side all race long, and here we go. 71 171 machine to Brandon Freeberg trying to make something work down there to the bottom side. Freeberg just made con contact with Jason Korn. In a side shot of Larry's car, the number 38 machine. He, right now, he's on the out the side looking in. Needs one spot, and he just has a couple more laps to do it as we're into turns at three and four now. Three line coming across the line. The 82, the 24, and the one, a seven one. And man, I don't know which lane would be the fastest. That are the out outside lane or you want the bottom side you pick your weapon to, but the 24 machine of Jesse Wall does one neither he wants that middle side part Jesse Wall trying to crack into the second place he's going to try to slide it right on up in front of Jason Court and now Jesse Wall has captured second, uh, second place not a done yet though five cars throw a blanket over the white flag is being shown to the race field Scott Smith is leading it Jesse Wall right there in second place Brandon still trying to hold down third they drag race off off and turn two and down the back straight for the final time in the turn at three and four who's going to win the first heat race of the season checkered flag wave Scott Smith down there to the bottom side Jesse Wall gave it a very good run there to the outside but just made it a tad bit short
Heat Race 1 results up there on your race screen now. Look at that. Point to zero, one, two. Scott Smith wins it. And Jason Korn is the first car on the outside. The 82 machine, man, right, was running that second place. Swift swapping for the race lead for most, for most of that race. I'm updating trading paints now. A lot of guys saying their trading paints ain't working. My apologies. Let's see if we can refresh, do the good old classic control R and hope for the best. Heat race two, getting ready to kick off the exact same thing. 10 laps, top four cars. The 010 machine, he'll be on pole, Garden. Jamie to his outside with the Rocket Esports, a 1-1 car. Steven will be starting there in third place with Kyle to his outside. Blake dependent the 0-1 machine with Wolf Racing. He'll be making up the third row with uh, Joy Nix from the great state of Texas. The number 95 machine. John Ruggio Jr., the 44 driver out of Carolina, will be starting in seventh with uh, Colton. From Illinois, he'll be starting in eighth. Corey ninth, Paul tenth, Wesley, and Justin Flagg. We'll be making up those last few spots. So here we go. Stack them up. Pack them up. Green flag. Green flag. seconds into heat race number two good run by jamie glenn Penn, the one one machine gonna try and get to the bottom side the 31s there make it three wide for the race lead in the apex of turns three and four card is gonna lead that lap once again jamie's gonna fall back to second place but got some very fast drivers right behind that one one car and he may be stuck three wide once again as these three drivers drag race drag race down the back stretch steven gilbert's made Made, made his way right up into the mix of 31 machine of Kyler Bruce as well. Kyler Bruce trying to hold back second place, trying to put his sights on for the race leaders. We're halfway home, the mama. But this 71 machine is not quite given up. Steven Gilbert trying to make this bottom side work, let his setting sail down to the bottom side, and hopefully that, that thing will stick. Outside shot of the pack now. That's a top three, top four that Jamie Glenpin. Now he's on the outside looking in. You have Blake Dependent back here in sixth place. You have Paul Hollerland back here in seventh. And man, we have racing all the way around Volusia Speedway Park. Corey, Justin Flagg, Joy Nix, and Colton Willett rounding out the race field. But here's our race leaders. He's going to capture lap eight of ten now. Keep your eye on this fourth and final transfer spot. That's what everybody needs to do. And right now, Jamie Glenpin, Gilpin, I don't know how you say it, but the 11 car outside looking in. Steven Gilbert has that spot. Can the 11 car make it in? Two laps ago, two minutes and 23 seconds in the heat race number two. You want to start off your season race number one, going straight to the Mag Daddy Show. And here we go. We'll see who, who can do it. Here in heat race at number two, track slicking up, a white flag is being shown to, to the field. Corden has a pretty good lead, a good battle for second place with John, with John Ruggio and Kyler Bruce, but still going to try to keep her eye right here on this fourth and last transfer spot. It looks like the 71 machine will try to capture it, and they're going to drag race to the line for second place. Kyler Bruce captures that second place with John Ruggio Jr. They're in third spot, so Glenn Penn, Gil Penn, the 11 car. He's on the outside looking in. So he'll have to work his way through the lower mains. We'll see how that all wor works out.
Heat race number three will keep the action rolling. Jacob Cook, 029 machine. EAC Racing, he'll be on pole with Cody C uh, Seaver, SRM driver. He'll be on the outside. Scooter Black, driver out of the crazy stand of California. He'll be starting in third. And Dustin Lehman, HRT racer, he'll be starting there in fourth place. Randy Reeser, fifth. And Colin Murphy, he'll be sixth place. Troy, seventh. Brandon, eighth. Michael Kennedy from basically its own country called Texas. Number, number 98 machine. Chris Cox, Cox Gaming. Check him out on uh, Facebook, HRT Driver, 515. James Clawson, the number 29 driver out of the Midwest. Eleven drivers, ten laps. He raced number three. There was no qualifying, so this is all completely uh, random. There we go. Stack them up, pack them up. Pace truck gonna make that hard left-hand corner. Jacob Cook stands on the loud pedal, and here we go, boys. Well, beating him, but a little training of the pace. Three wide, multiple rows deep. Jacob Cook, a race leader, was stuck right smack down in the middle. The 28's being stuck down onto the bottom side, and we have a huge wreck back here. The 98 and Colin Murphy, both of them getting into the outside wall, and a tough break for those two drivers, but back up front, Layman leads it. Check this view out. Out of some of these drivers, Brandon Holt. Holt, Holt Meyer, and he is getting tossed around right now. Track is getting bumpy. C contact there in front of him. Three cars get piled up. Outside shot of the race field. Layman leads. Scooter Black, Jacob Cook, and then uh, Cody there in the fourth spot. Cody, the 57 the machine, doesn't have too much pressure there behind him. So if he can just hold on to his fourth and final transfer spot. As uh, now Jacob Cook just tags the outside wall. Now Jacob Cook's going to get a little pressure from Troy Vaughn. They drive race down the back stretch. One minute, 45 seconds. Had a couple of wrecks here in heat race number three. Track slicking up for sure. Obviously, no, no caution flags in this race, but check this driver out of James Clawson making that 29 machine, trying to work there on the high side, an all black and green machine as he roars down the back stretch. James Clawson, he was kind of far back there, trying to make his way up to the front right now. He kind of has a little bit of roadblock. James going to try and make it three wide. James trying to force his way up front. Laps are winding down. Got a driver right there in front of him, about 357 of Troy Vaughn trying to get around him. But right now, Jacob Cook's on a move to the front, trying to get up to that top four spots. Our race leader, Dustin Lehman, he does have a 2.1 second lead, so a big statement by this number 30 machine. And Cody, a uh, pretty good spot here in P2. Scooter Black is now P3. Troy Vaughn, a driver that's moved up three spots. Here in the uh, uh, heat race, and number three is holding this last and final transfer spot. James Clawson outside looking in. Can he make it in? Last time down the back stretch into turn three. Top four advances. James Clawson wants it. Troy Vaughn has it. Troy runs that slider line to the line. And Clawson, 29 machine, outside looking in. Want to check something really, really quick? Change that screen for a quick hot second. Click this button. You'll hear a little bing. I hit that button, and we'll go right back to race.
Here we go. For the B main. I think only one driver advances out. I mean, I hate doing this, but here we go. Nah, there's 12 drivers. All right. I was like, I don't... I, don't, I thought I seen one driver there in the race info. It's, it's always hard to tell. Always hard, hard to tell. So here we go. B main event. Lots of drivers in this one. We have 20... It was supposed to have 23 drivers. And four of them are not making it to the race line. So here goes the grid kind of quick. Jason Korn and Jamie on the front row. James and John, they're in the making up the second row. The drivers making up the third row is going to be Blake and Brandon. Thomas Vickers and Paul uh, ha uh, Hollerland, the number eight machine at seventh and eighth place. Jacob Cook and Desmond, ninth and tenth. Wesley and Chris Cox will, will be making up that 11th and 12th spot. Thirteenth, fourteenth spots: Daniel Adams, Joseph, and uh, Corey Silsby. Fifteenth: Michael Kennedy and Travis, Justin, Colin, James, Jory, Nix, Jandy, or Randy. My apologies, Trent and uh, Colton. That's a race filled. Top twelve drivers make it in. Chris Cox has that twelfth spot. Daniel Adams, Joseph's on and back. So 13th place on back. You got some work to do. Outside shot. Here's a blimp mode. You can see this track. Bottom side's completely all slicked up. Here we go. Green flag out. lapper 46 seconds in here we go the number 11 machine man he was just on the outside of his heat race just lost it by one spot but right now trying to make a statement here the bravo here in the b main event as he leads a lap number four john Dar uh, darby right there be behind him there in the double o three wide for th for third place number eight machine just got passed from the high side and the bottom side Check this out way back here. I thought I seen a little bit of four wide action. Dust is being brought up around Bluja quite heavily now. So breaking down the race, Phil, that's where it is. We're working lap five of 15, 10 laps to go. Side by side racing. 12 drivers advance. So how hard do you want to drive if you're up here in the top five? That's a question that you got to ask. If these drivers do have a spotter and or a teammate, how hard are they telling telling their drivers uh, how how hard to go? Only 18 drivers are really in the mix right now. Justin Flags back there in 19th place is in the race. Everyone else is out be, be, behind him as we are beating and banging up, up here for second place. John Derby, someone says in the chat, let's go. JDM Designs on, on, on Facebook. Well, right now, Dar Darby is trying to battle out for the race lead. Side by side, drag race down the back stretch. And man, you can throw a blanket over a good five, six, seven, seven cars. It's anybody's race at, at, at this point. You have Paul Hollerland right there, right smack dab in the middle part of the racetrack, trying to get that dirt late model ar ar around this place. And that's his view. Off the front nose. Here's a gyro mode of, of him. Just inches away from that quarter panel. Trying to tell one of these guys to go. He kind of has a little roadblock, it seems like. Cannot find an open spot. He's going to try the all the way to the outside wall. Paul Harlerland trying to get to the front. Three wide for the, at the line. Car smashing the outside wall. Swapping paint. Harlerland trying to keep it together, and he will. Man, he tried to force that issue. He tried to make it work. Only four laps to go. Those 
When it's time to go, it's time to go. Race for the lead, it's anyone's race. Right now, John Dermy, the double open machine, trying to carry the speed down on the bottom side. Hollerland trying to make that middle side still work. Remember that all the way next to that outside wall, it kind of flattens out here, here at Volusia. So you gotta, you gotta keep that in mind. Can't drift that car all the way out to the outside wall. Then here we go, two laps to go. Three minutes and 36 seconds. We do have a lap car about to come, come into the mix. And there it is, the 20th place driver of, of, of Trent. Don't know if the drivers will catch him or not, but uh, something to keep, keep in mind. Two laps to go, and we may have a spinner up up front. Everyone trying to hold it together, and we have a new race leader. John Derby almost gets spun. He drops back three spots, and now John is going to try to battle out for third and fourth. Jamie Glenpin is our race leader. One lap to go with the, with the lap car right there in front of him. Glenpin tries to work to the bottom side of the lap car. He doesn't work. Here comes Hollerland down on the bottom side. Drag race for third place, a double zero machine, and Brandon. The number two machine, drivers coming out of turn four to the checker flag. Who's going to grab that 12 spot? Colin Murphy right there, the number nine machine. Grabs that 12 spot, and Colin Murphy will be the last driver in, making it into the Mac Daddy, the A main show for the first race of the War Horse Dirt Car Series presented by Diggs by Dirt One. Get some of that. Final results will be up there on your race screen. Man, that lap car, he almost came into, he almost came into play big time. Don't want to say he lost it for Jamie uh, Gilpin. Gilpin tried to work to the bottom side of him. Tried to, I, I, he, he started sliding up. I didn't know if he uh, thought he was clear or not, but regardless, he wasn't. The lap car was there to his outside. Hollerland came out of nowhere, got a very good run coming out of two, and Merry Christmas. Harlan, that number eight machine, man, he tried to make that middle side work all race long, and he finally, finally got to the front. Last lap, half, ha half a lap, really. Warm-up is underway. These drivers try to dial in their machines, and we'll see how it all works out. But that is the B main results right there. So back to racing. Best lap time will be up there on the race screen with uh, actually here, let's do this. We'll do last la la lap time. If I can hit the right buttons. Last la lap times and then the best lap time will be all the way there to the right hand side as these drivers get dialed in.
They throw the checker flag on uh, warm up and that's going to be it. What you got is what you got. 24 drivers have made the field. They're going to make the call to the starting line. And we're going to have one one guy with a checker flag in hand for race number one. So let's get ready to go down the lineup. For race number one, driver that's going to be on pole for the War Horse Dirt Car Series is going to be Scott Smith with Cardin. The 010 machine to his outside. Dustin Lehman will be starting in third with Jesse Wall right there to his outside. Kyler Bruce and Cody Sieber. Number 57 machine will be making up that third row. Fourth row is going to be Brandon and John. Scooter and Larry will be making up that fifth row. Six, or sixth row, 11th and 12th place is going to be Steven and Troy. Seventh row is going to be Paul and Jamie. John and Brandon. Blake and Desmond, 17, 18th spot. 19th is gonna be Jason Korn, and uh, 20th spot's gonna be Jason Clausen, the number 29 machine driver out of the Midwest. Travis, the 13 from Ohio, will be starting in 21st with Chris Cox, 515 HRT squad. Number, he'll be starting in uh, 22, the double deuce spot. Thomas Vickers, and then the last driver making it in is a number nine machine down at the B main from the Midwest, Colin Murphy. Mac Daddy time. This is where it all counts. No one cares about practice. No one cares about heat races. We all care for the Mac Daddy show. And check that out. The feature laps. 60 laps around Volusia. And here we go. Green flag is out. 24 cars, 60 laps. To the front we go, and here we go. We have one guy blinking in and out. I still don't believe he's popping back in yet. Lap three, they work down the back stretch, side by side, drag race for the race lead. Cardin all the way to the high side. Scott Smith working that middle side part of the racetrack there, the 53. Scott Smith is going to get a very good run down to the bottom side he's going to try to hold on to the race lead but kyler bruce a 31 machine trying to work that middle side part of the racetrack kyler bruce right now is sitting p3 with the 44 machine of john ruggio jr trying to get to the inside of him easy john john almost climbs that, or hits a quarter panel of the 31 but everything's good these drivers know how to race i have no idea how to race these machines caution flags are going to be i racing only caution flag so no race admin will be causing it, just eye racing as we are all still stacked up and packed up. Scott Smith trying to hold back the hungry, the hungry wolves. Kyler Bruce just gets kind of checked out right out of the racing line. Now the 31 of Kyler Bruce, but man, I tell you, this 44 machine, the John Rio Jr., he's not giving up without a fight. The all-white machine down there to the very bottom side of the racetrack almost gets into the side panel. Or the quarter panel of Kyle Bruce a couple times, but has but, but has able to keep it off of him. But right now, Kyle Bruce has settled in for P2. I'm oh, sorry, as John Ruggio Jr. has settled in for P2. Kyle Bruce settles in to that P1 spot. And uh, from uh, third on back, nobody settled out quite yet. But man, Paul Hollerland, that's one of these drivers that I'll be watching. I was very impressed with that uh, with that B main. How he was able to move move that Pro Dirt Late model around. Caution is going to wave. Caution is out on the speedway here at Volusia. For the very first time all night long, it's going to come out on lap number nine, two minutes and 43 seconds into the Smack Daddy show.
yellow flag waves, man, but I really don't know exactly, uh, exactly what all ha happened. So we'll do the good old TV number three, and there it is. A little bit early. The zero one zero. <laughs> that driver, he came in hot. Little tap there on the back bumper. Got a it was set sail down in turns of one and two. Clips that back bumper of the 24 machine. The 38 had absolutely nowhere to go. Here in the quarter speed, slow mo action. Caution laps will not count, so this will be a true 60 lap A main event. They did not uh, they did not rework the racetrack whatsoever, so it is completely carried over from uh, from lap one of heat race num number one all the way here to the A main show. Caution lights on the space truck will be going off this time by, so we'll be going green flag racing next lap. Hard charger right now is going to be Paul Hollerland, I believe, as iRacing will fix itself as everyone come, comes across the line. But Paul Hollerland, I believe, is uh, unofficially the hard charger there on the right-hand part of the scoring tower. Forget about the number 11 machine. He was in that crash. So Kyler Bruce has moved up two spots. John Ruggio Jr. has moved up four. Paul Hollerland will move up uh, eight spots once Glenn Penn's uh, number 11 machine will get out of the scoring tower. Travis Sinclair, though, back there in the 11th spot, he I believe he is a hard charger. Has moved up uh, 10 spots. Number 13, but machine. Watch him for a couple laps. 50 laps to go in the A-Main show. Plenty of laps to go, and man, we see a lot of bent up sheet metal. Tell those speed bumps that, that down there on the front stretch. These these cars are bouncing all over the place. We'll watch it one more time as they work off a of turn two and down this weird D-shaped back stretch and into turn three. You almost have to turn this car the entire way. Check out these speed bumps. Caution is going to wave. Pace truck going to pull out carelessly right onto the racetrack. So only two laps of racing and Caution is going to wave once again. To live mode back to race mode here's a little bit of race I info here at uh, Volusia Volusia Speedway Park track link is 0.42 miles temperature 75 degrees city is Barberville fun track man absolutely fun track one of my fa favorite tracks you gotta be careful with turn four though that outside wall in turn four really sneaks up on, on you here's a blimp shot of the racetrack and you can see there on the back stretch as I'm sure we've all raced this track but before kind of just a d-shaped Kind of like a big old donut. Just gotta keep keep that machine turning and uh, get get yourself line, lined up for turns three. A lot of drivers can hug that inside wall and try to throw, throw that big time slide job. Don't know how they do it, but they do. Stack them up, back them up. Let's shimmy a shive down into turn one. Caution, the lights are out on the out on the pace truck. He gets off the racetrack, and here we go. Back under green flag conditions. Another driver turned around and hit the inside wall. 57 machine. Caution is still not out.
So breaking down the race bill, Kyle Bruce is our race leader. John Ruggio Jr., the all-white machine. Now here comes a caution. John Ruggio Jr. was that white car all the way to the outside. And the third time now, the caution is going to wave on lap 14 of 60. Murphy is showing red up up on the program. We'll see if Colin Murphy had anything to do with it. Colin Murphy, the number nine machine, all the way there to the outside. He was the last driver that made it in from the B main as he did capture that 12th and final spot. And look at that, all the way to the outside wall. Here in the extra slow mo, and let's speed it up a little bit. Man, he gets glued to the outside wall. Then he smashes the tires and his car disappears. Paul Murphy just completely disappeared after he smashed the outside wall. Pace truck lights are off and we'll hopefully he can get some green flag racing. Everyone from the U.S. here. Just a little side note. Caution lights back out onto the race truck. War Horse Dirt Car Series. You can find them out on Facebook if you guys like to join this at, uh, this action. Presented by Diggs by dirt one racing those are the main the that's the title sponsor up there in the right hand part of the screen so much appreciated to those guys thursday night man if you can win if you can win this thing it'd make your friday a, a little bit better Kyler Bruce, Brandon Freeberg, they're going to be on the front row with John Ruggio Jr. and Paul Hollerland. Those two drivers have been battling out all race long, and here we go, green flag out. The 31 machine, Kyler Bruce shoots out like a cannon. And Hollerland once again is going to try to force that third late model there in that three wide position. He's going to do a three wide coming across the line. 171, Brandon Freebart and Hollerland. They've been battling it out all race long, but Hollerland is not scared to make it three wide racing. And he's going to capture that third and fourth spot. Yellow flag back out on lap 16. Uh, once again, only two laps. Caution waves. Slow up all that horsepower, and uh, we'll see exactly what happened. Blake Dependent and Jamie Glenpin is showing red. Fourth time now, caution has waved. I don't know if these are two separate instances or not. The old one machine is Blake. And man, they look like there was contact in, in front of him. Yeah, right there in front of the number seven machine stuck three wide and he was bouncing off of cars like a pinball m machine and uh old blake had absolutely nowhere to go blake dependent from a wolf racing man the two car got his back wheels li lifted off the ground back to limo back to race mode 12 minutes nine seconds in to the a main show
best lap time of uh, the 16 laps is going to be given it to Travis Sinclair, the 13 machine. That driver's on the move. Back there in seventh place, Travis trying to work his way up front, trying to get out of all the mess. He's moved up 14 spots ever since the green flag is waved. The 13 machine, the all green car down to the bottom side, Travis Sinclair. We'll see if that driver can work his way all the way to the front. Right now, he has a lot of cars that he needs to pass, but uh, he did have a whole lot more. So he's already moved up 14, so here we go. Green flag is out. We'll try to get some green flag racing underway. The 53 machine, Scott Smith, setting sail down to turns one and two, back-to-back -back times, almost three wide there with him. The 38 machine of Larry is in that as well. Our race leader is going to be this driver right here, the 31 machine of Kyler Bruce, trying to work off a of turn two, yellow. Yellow is back out on the speedway. This track gets uh, more and more rougher. More, uh, a lot more cautions start start coming out. You can see this track is completely beat up. One thing I do want to note, though, daytime racing. I love it. Love some daytime ra racing. Everyone wants to race in the in the dark. It's cool and all, but man, daytime racing. I kind of like it. Cautions out. We'll try to figure out exactly what happened. And man, I hopefully I didn't jinx him. But uh, Travis is showing red up on the program after the yellow flag has came out. We'll see what ha happened or if this was it. I think it may have been way farther. No, Travis gets tapped there in the corner panel. He goes into the outside wall, smashes it, and uh, man, that's no good. I may have just jinxed Travis at Sinclair, and uh, now I feel bad. After talk talking about him so much. The driver, the hard charger, moved up 14 spots, working that seventh spot. Then the 38 machine came in a little too hot for the for the skillet, and man, clipped him right in the corner panel and uh, sent him flying to the outside wall. So we're going to stack them up, back them up once again. That's so what we're going to do. We're going to jump onto the 10th place driver of Troy Vaughn. Jump right inside the cockpit, right in the visor cam, and see what this driver has to see. Uh, Troy Vaughn, man, pull a tear off, dude. Here we go. Green flags out. Working lap 20 of 60 now. See just how bumpy, just see how bumpy that front stretch is. These cars are bouncing all over the place. Walt trying to stand on the stand on the loud pedal, still riding on board. Troy Vons did start in tenth place. Right now he finds himself in the eighth. Caution is going to wave. Caution's going to wave once again a lap 22 of 60. And, man, I know a lot of these drivers want to see this uh, green flag wave. I, I racing cautions, though. Kyle Bruce has led a lot of a lot of these laps, but the one thing with all these caution flags, a leader can get a very good jump down there on the bottom side. And, man, it really leaves that outside lane just kind of just kind of stuck there. Caution was in the back part of the race or back in the back part of the pack once again. I want to change something up here on my on my thing one more time. My apologies.
18 minutes and three seconds in. We're all only a lap 22 of 60, just shy of halfway. Kyler Bruce captured the race lead. Kyler started there in the second row. So he's moved up three spots. Right now, he's our race leader with John Ruggio Jr., and he's been putting up a very strong fight. Would love to see this thing go green flag racing. John Ruggio Jr. has moved up uh, four spots ever since a green flag. And then you have Steve uh, Stephen Gilbert there behind him with Brandon Freeberg. So green flag back out. We'll see if these drivers can kind of get spread out a little bit to get some green flags. Sixty once again, and here we go. Throw a blanket over the top four. Ruggio Jr. all the way to the outside. Trying to rip the lip around turns three and four. Get a big run down the front straightaway. Not quite. Hollerland is going to follow. Follow John all the way to the outside wall. Absolutely love that driver's driving style. He can put that dirt late model absolutely anywhere. Question is, can he get up to the race lead by doing that? Right now, Kyler Bruce is nice and smooth, trying to get around these corners. Did not get that front end turn in, and John tries to get around him. Gets right up into that flat spot, the 31 machine. And Kyler Bruce did not have a good turns one and two, and now Brandon Freeberg is trying to put on the, the pressure. And look at that, all the back bumper of the second place. Uh, driver of, of Brandon Freeberg got three hungry hounds right there behind me with a 71 of Steven. You have John and then you have Paul down there on the bottom side part of the racetrack. And man, got to get a move on. Kyler Bruce kind of pulls a little bit of a gap as of right now. The gap is up there on the scoring tower. A half a second lead for the 31 machine as they are battling quite hard here for the second place. We'll make a good run down the bat or down down the line. Scott Smith, the number 53 machine. He was a driver that I believe started on, on pole. Right now he finds himself in sixth place, trying to get that machine back up and going. Troy Vaughn back here in seventh place. John Derby is sitting here in eighth place. Someone shouted him out there in the uh, chat section. So right now John Derby, the double O machine, coming across the line on lap 28. On lap 28 in eighth place, you have Larry here in ninth. Chris Cox with Cox and Gaming. Check him out on Facebook. He's wearing the bottom side of the 38 machine of Larry. Trying to make it work. Not quite. Three wide. John Derby to the outside. They're going to drag race down the front stretch and into turns on one and two. The 357 machine of Troy Vaughn is right there in front of him. But these drivers putting on a show back here for the seventh, eighth, and ninth spot. Slide job for the 515 of Chris Cox right in front of Larry and Chris Cox just got tired of running running three wide he just decided to throw the good old slide job so trying to stay focused well, Jesse Wall is back here in the 11th spot Jesse Wall I believe he got into a got into a wreck one of the first wrecks actually so Jesse Wall has actually lost seven spots you have Jason Korn back here in 12th spot Cody Sieber he's lost seven spots seven spots as well back in 13th Thomas Vickers 14th Desmond 15th James Clausen back here kind of all by himself right now he was a driver that was able to make it straight into the A main I do believe as we are halfway home, the mom of this time by Blake Depin and a very good big block modified driver. He finds himself at 17. Travis, you have Carden, you have Brandon. Everyone else is either out of this race or multiple laps down as we work lap 33 of a 60. So back up front, the outside, a camera view. Kyler Bruce still leading the way around Volusia Speedway Park. As a caution is going to wave, and that half a second lead, a 1.8 second lead to third place, is going to vanish for him. John Ruggio Jr. found himself in a very good second place spot trying to hunt him down, but hate to see it. Hate to see a caution flag with that many green flag laps, but uh, four laps over ha halfway. And man, Kyler Bruce putting on a statement for race number one.
caution out and chris cox is showing red up on the program now listen i don't know what happened but we was riding on board with, with him when he threw that that mini slide job that's all i'll say he threw a mini slide job right right up in front of somebody had a triple number so anyways chris cox is showing red up on the program we'll see what happened to this driver Five one five. There he is, the double O machine of Darby, right there behind him, and just gets hooked right in the corner panel. He goes flying, does a three sixty. Darby tries to hold on to it, does he? He does. One more time, check this out. Live mode. Darby just gets a little high. Could not get keep that front end down. Clips him right in the quarter panel, and that's gonna be it for that driver. He does a almost runs into a crowd of people there. So a top 10 run for Chris Cox is gonna be vanished. He'll have to work his way back up front. Lap 34 of 60 is what we're working. Kyler Bruce been putting on a very strong performance. John Ruggio Jr. loves that high side part of the racetrack. The yeah, Brandon Freeberg. Don't know exactly what that driver has. He's been up in the mix all, all race long. Freeberg's moved up two spots since the initial green flag. Started up, up, up front. A very good heat, heat race by that 171 driver, Brandon Freeberg. We'll see what he has. Yeah, Paul Hollerland. That driver's not scared to put that dirt late model in anywhere. Green flag waves. Let's make a good storyline. Ruggio all the way up to the outside wall. But man, just does not seem like it's working. Kyler Bruce gonna hold that middle side part of the racetrack, gonna feather that throttle coming off a of turn four. And here we go, Kyler Bruce. Gonna lead another lap down the speed bumps up the front stretch and two cars into the outside wall. And the yellow is gonna wave two cars, smash the outside wall. Pretty sure that was Jesse Wall and Blake dependent. Coming down the front stretch, hits those speed bumps, and then uh, all I know, caution started waving. Lobby opened up at eight, eight o'clock central time. I've been straight, I've been live for one hour and 40 seconds, and we're on lap 35 of 60 in the A main show and uh, getting wrecked at this point of the night always is always never could if i get wrecked in the a main man just make it early not halfway through here we go 24 machine shut that thing three wide there's john derby all the way to the outside three wide action check out this camera view through the speed bumps and i think i won't say it quite yet we'll watch another another view but Jesse Wall and John Derby. Big hit all the way to the outside. Fence area. Let's watch it again. Check this out. 24 car tries to make it make it three wide. Al almost does. Boys from the blimp mode. Speed it up a little bit. Whiskey Oval. Let's slow it back down. And these cars, this right here, everything just bumps. May a little bit of net code. I don't know. You guys can make the call on that, but uh, big hit right here. Back to live mode. Back to race mode. We go. Race controller wants to do it single file. That's what the admin wants. That's what the admin is going to get. So I don't know. I don't know if it's good for uh, the second place of the 44 of John Ruggio. Brandon Freeberg, Steven Gilbert, Paul Hollerland, top five. Scott Smith back there in sixth spot. Driver that started off on Paul. He's on the outside of the top five now. And here we go. Green flag back out for these Pro Dirt Lake models. Side by side, Ruggio tries to get to the quarter panel. He, he does down into turn three. John Ruggio Jr. side by side. Drag race up in turn four. Kyle Bruce engine just pulls him right off of that, that, that corner, though. 
first car all the way to the outside is, of course, Paul Hollerland as he works an outside next to the high and scary wall. The 171, Brandon Freeberg. This is one of those drivers I just don't know how much speed this driver actually has. He may be in that strategy of just survive till the end. Well, the end is coming is coming near as we're 28 minutes, 11 seconds. Lap 38 of 60. Brandon Freeberg kind of been in this P3 spot all night long, so we'll see if these three drivers can kind of make a little bit of gap. And then this driver right here, Hollerland, not scared to put this thing anywhere. And look at that. Putting that right rear tire all the way next to the outside wall. Down the back stretch. And he caught a little, he caught a little bit too much walling into the tires. Paul Hollerland, right when I go go onto his uh into his car, he smashes the outside wall, gets glued to it. And hits the tires and he just hits the good old pit button and he's gonna be done for for the night. Matt George says this motor motocross track, man, it really seems like it down the front straight away. These cars bouncing all over the place. Makes it fun, I, I guess. I don't know. But here we go with the with the caution, this latest ca caution. machine I believe here it is check this out hard hit to the outside he just gets clipped and man he gets glued and then those tires came of course we gotta watch it one more time but through the cockpit mode He knew it. He knew at that point he, he was he was completely done for. So back to live mode, back to race mode. Will the race controller want a uh, single file restart? Looks like he he will. Twenty laps to go. Kyler Bruce still our race leader. Ruggio Jr. tries to get a good jump on the restart. And hits the race leader. Green flag is waved, and they're going to keep it green. Green flag racing. John Ruggio Jr. tried to time that start and he almost did just perfect, but he just tapped that loud pedal a little bit early and hit Kyla Bruce right in the ass end. And Kyla Bruce then stepped on the loud pedal. They were almost side by side coming across the line. So John Ruggio Jr. trying to give it everything that driver has. Steven Gilbert up here to the fourth spot now. The all black 71 machine. Haven't talked much about this driver and really don't know what he has under underneath that hood as he works that bottom side coming across those speed bumps and you can see those two drivers trying to stick to the bottom side of those bumps does it make it faster i have no idea but here's the last lap times up there on your race screen a race leader of kyler bruce a 17.49 everyone else in the 17.5 to 17.7 range So as the top five kind of gets single filed out now, here's Larry back here in seventh place. John Derby, kind of a roller coaster night for, for, for this driver. Did not make it straight into the A main, I don't believe. He may have. He has moved up seven spots. So I believe he won. I believe he advanced from the B main, but the John Derby, he was almost, he wasn't through the accident of the, with the number 24 car, but right now he finds himself in the eighth spot and up into the top 10. And man, I believe that would be a very, a very good spot for him. Of course, you always want to advance, but man, kind of a roller coaster night. Jason Korn back here in ninth place, moved up 10 spots. And Travis Sinclair's back out on the racetrack. Actually, he's always been back out on the racetrack, but this driver's moving up lap after lap. And he still moved up 11 spots. Right when I started talking about this driver, he does get into a wreck. So don't want to talk about Travis at Sinclair too much. But right now, he has found himself up in the top 10, trying to set his sight on, on Jason Korn. And everybody 
everybody else right back out here. Almost side by side battles but back here for 12th and 13. It's no, oh my goodness, Sinclair. Travis Sinclair gets into another wreck. Right when I start talking about that driver, I throw some bad voodoo on, on him and he always gets into a crash. A yellow flag has gone away with Kyler Bruce leading on lap 48 of 60. Slow mo action. Why not? The 82 machine did not have a very good corner entry. And once again, that's how Sinclair got wrecked the first time. He gets tapped from the back the, the first time he wrecked. And right there, does the exact same thing with Cody Sieber tapping him this time. One thing I will know. Zebra, I believe, hit, hits the back end of that car right there in front of me. Check this out. The 82 machine kind of slides up in front of the 13 and then, I don't know, trying kind of a chain reaction regardless. That's what ha happened. Back to Limo, back to race mode. Does anybody have to say anything to this 31 machine? Here we go. We'll see if John can get a good jump once again. See if he can jump to time it. And he does. Times it just perfect to the quarter panel of a race leader, Kyler Bruce. Down into turn one slide. Jump for the race sleeper, John Bergu Jr. Crossover by, by Kyler Bruce. Drag race down the back stretch. And man, the 44 almost had it that time. Good heads up racing by, by Kyler Bruce. So once he lost the lead, he, got, he grabbed that right back, blinking in and out as a third place. Slide jump for the race lead once again and a new race leader for a short bit. And Kyler Bruce gets the lead by a nose down the back stretch. Into turns three and four. Those drivers get connected and Ruggio gets sent to the outside wall. He is not going to be happy about that with 10 laps ago. Can the 44 machine get back to the back bumper? But here comes Brandon Freeberg. Freeberg down to the bottom side. New race leader with 10 laps to go here in the Mac Daddy Show. Race one of Warhorse Dirt Car Series presented by Diggs by Dirt One Racing. Brandon Freeberg. I've said it multiple times. Don't know exactly what this driver has, but here comes John Ruggio Jr. back to the outside. And with that little bit of contact, did Kyler Bruce get, get damaged once Hillman, Hillman John made contact because he is sliding back now he has lost two spots and now kyler bruce is being attacked by stephen gilbert now as they go down the back stretch eight laps ago 36 seconds and 30 seconds 36 minutes and 32 seconds into the mac daddy show and you just lose a race lead so here we go battle for the race lead once again is heating up side by side brandon freeberg john ruyo jr and man this 44 machine wants a race lead but just cannot find it and there it is the 44 machine is going to power himself all the way around the outside and a new race leader with six laps ago now the 44 machine has finally captured the race lead kyler bruce has led almost every single lap of these of the first 50 laps and about right now he's sitting in third place Stephen Gilbert fourth Scott Smith is being showed in fifth place Troy Vaughn sixth Larry Liam John Derby Jason Korn and Desmond Bisbee rounding out the top 10 last lap times are up there on the race screen no lap traffic in front of these drivers Ruggio Jr. 17.5 Freeberg a 17.6 and on down so John definitely still has speed after he taps the outside wall. But I'm really curious if Kyler Bruce got any, 
create uh, any sort of damage out of that contact as those drivers were side by side into turn three. A little bit of contact was made and the 44 hits the outside wall. And then after that, the 31 machine has just been off the pace ever since, but he's been slowly keeping on track. There he is, a 17.8 that, that lap. So back up front, John Ruggio Jr. trying to close it on out. Still has a 171 trying to stock him down. Two laps to go around Volusia Speedway Park, and you know his drilling is absolutely rushing right, right now. Inside cockpit of Brandon Freeberg as he blinks in and out real quick, right back into it. And, why, and the white flag has gone away. So for the last time, around Volusia Speedway Park after an all night long, over an hour since the lobby has opened. John Ruggio Jr., 38 minutes and 49 seconds here in the A main show. He's gonna capture lead with eight laps to go and he's gonna get the checker flag. For race number one, John Ruggio Jr. pulls out the win. Brandon Freeberg, P2. Kyler Bruce, after leading almost the entire race, finishes in that last podium spot. Steven Gilbert fourth, Scott Smith fifth. And what a race we had for the Warhorse Dirt Car Series presented by Diggs by Dirt One Racing. That was a blast. Lots of, I uh, don't want to say lots of cautions because this was a 60 lap race. As they do the good old classic uh, eye racing photo shoot here. As we, as we jump right into the uh, as we jump right into right into discord I had something playing in my headset don't know what what it was but man what a race that was that was definitely fun man 40 minutes into the A main show. So we'll try to talk to the top three finishers right now. I got Kyler Bruce. And Kyler, man, what a race, dude. You had, you definitely led a lot of laps out, out there. Yeah, car felt pretty good, really. Uh, just seemed to get a little tight through the center towards the last 15, 20 laps. And then John got by me, and I know I got tight and hit him again like I did in the heat race and wanted to keep it off him, but I couldn't get the push out of it. Yeah, we was wondering, man. Did you uh, did you have any did you have any damage from that? Uh, I don't think so. I think it was. I definitely hit him, but I don't think it was as bad as it looked. In all honesty, but sixty lap race, man. I know this is uh, for me at least. This is a little bit longer than usual. A main. So did uh, did you have to adjust your driving style any, or or was it was a was a was a vibe different? Ah, uh, yeah, it was definitely different. I had to pace myself. Uh, like normally our officials are 30 and sometimes you get into hosts that are 40 or 50. So 60, especially that blue show is pretty long. Uh, I had to keep the car underneath me and make it to the end. And yeah, I mean, you can't win unless you're there at the end. So I had to give myself an opportunity. Well, man, you definitely put on a very, very strong performance leading a lot of these, uh, a lot of these, uh, a, uh, this a main feature e event, man. So, uh, podium spot for race number one is not too bad, buddy. Uh, do you have any friends, family, sponsors, teammates that, that you li like to give a shout out to? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, first off, McConey Setup Shop. Um, we partnered with them for the upcoming season, so that'll be helpful for us. SRG does a great job with our graphics. Uh, Tend to Win, it's a teammate's YouTube channel. Uh, always has awesome videos. Sidebite Motorsports, that's a team we're on. Quite a few of us are in the league. And then Raise Energy. Well, very cool, man. Well, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you next Thursday night for the war for the Warhorse Dirt Dirt Car Series. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thanks, man. Kyler Bruce is going to finish in that third spot, and the guy that's finishing second is going to be Brandon Freeberg. And uh, Brandon, man, I gotta say, I don't know halfway through that race, I didn't know how how uh, fast you actually was, man. I know you was in the top five all night long, mostly the top three, but uh, man, you found yourself in the lead with about ten laps to go. Yeah, for sure. Early on there, uh, I was pretty good, kind of rolling the middle to bottom. Uh, later in the race, though, it seemed like guys were able to make that top work, and I wasn't. I just don't have that good of a throttle control or something because I'd get the car loose in the center when I was trying to run the top. So on restarts, if I was on the outside row, that hurt me 
I'd usually drop a few spots, but I get back to the bottom. I was pretty good. And then, uh, when Johnny got back by me towards the end, I, I learned a lot just following him and was sweeping my corners a little wider and, and keeping the car a little more bent all the way around and just keeping it tractioned up a little bit more all the way around the track. And that seemed to help a lot there. And we kind of walked away there towards the end. So that was good. Man, that front straightaway seemed like it was a motocross track. Uh, as one of the viewers said, it man, it, was, it seemed extremely bumpy. Uh, how was that affecting your car? W could you, could you, can, you know, throttle, uh, did you throttle control through them or anything? Yeah, it's tough when the bottom's still there, like early in the race, I like to come off of four and stay real low on the front stretch there just to kind of avoid that. But later in the race, you got to sweep your entry in one, so you got to go through them. And honestly, you pick up the throttle, and it seems like the easiest thing to do to keep the car straight is just to be smooth. You know, don't stab the gas, but just wherever you're at, just kind of stay there and hold it. And yeah, it hops like crazy. We were joking in a practice before it got like that, that the quick line was to double in, triple out, and you know, we were all kind of making jokes like that because it is, it's like a super gross track, but next week at USA, I know that track will be like that too on the front stretch. It'll probably get worse there. So, um, ever since they redid this tire model and I racing for dirt, that's, uh, that happens at a lot of tracks. So we'll probably be dealing with that all season. Well, man, a very strong performance for race number one, uh, finished there in the second spot. So a very good start to your, to your, uh, race season here for the Warhorse dirt car series presented by, uh, digs by dirt one racing, man. So you got any shout outs that uh, you like to give? Yeah, first off, uh, I want to give a big shout out to Travis St. Clair. Me and him pulled this lead together, and, and all the drivers, really happy to see the turnout. Um, we put together a really good roster here, I think. To, I mean, the, the heats were great. Uh, feature was a little rough, more cautions that we like to see, but you'll have that in these long races on slick tracks, guys trying to make moves. But uh, So thanks to everybody coming out. Um, as for myself here, uh, Freeberg Racing Components, uh, Rocket Esports, Digs by D1RT, great setups. If you haven't got one, go try them out. They're great. Um, ML Performance, Matt Logan, man, he helps us out a lot. And then uh, all the guys at D1RT, Johnny Rugg here, uh, him and Cole Cabrera, they help us a lot, Scooter Black. So uh, big thanks to those guys. And, uh, yep. and then uh, thanks to you, too, for putting on the broadcast. Really appreciate it. Very cool, man. We'll talk to you next Thursday. Yep, thanks. Brandon Fre Freeberg coming in that P2, man. Had the race lead with 10 laps to go. Just could not hold off the thundering herd of the 44 of John Ruggio Jr. And, John, man, uh, that was fun to watch, dude. <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun to uh to race, man. The track was really interesting there and had a lot of character. Front straightaway was good and rough. Um, you know, the bottom was faster for a while, then it faded, the middle came in, and uh I was like, Man, this could be it, like single fouled out. And then oddly enough, I haven't really seen it very often, but like a half a line above the middle came in. And I knew if I got there before anybody else, I was going to be all right. So it, it, I was able to hold on and hold off Brandon, but that was a lot of fun. Man, you was battling out with uh, Kyler Bruce all night long uh, while he was leading. You was there in second place, man. Could uh, Was you just kind of searching all, all over the racetrack? Did you kind of have a plan to get around him? <laughs> I definitely didn't have a plan, which kind of hurt me a little because I didn't get to practice much for this. Or I'm sorry, I didn't practice at all. Um, just no time. So anyway, I didn't know what line was going to be good at what point in the race. So I was trying to follow him, and then whenever I could run him down, I would try something different to try to pass him, and never could quite get the momentum I needed. And you know, I appreciate him running me clean. It was a really, really good race, fun. You know, the whole time. And uh, and yeah, so it, it was tough, but I, I knew once he would make a few mistakes, I could capitalize on him, and you know, it all played out. You was side by side with him, looking like almost down or almost coming across the line on one of those restarts. We had a lot of restarts, kind of late part of the race. Uh, there was one restart it looked like you was trying to just time it just perfect, and I think you guys made a little bit of contact. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, there. <laughs> I certainly did. I um, it was one of the things you know the track's so single lined and you know one lane through the middle that I knew if I could get a good start and more or less force him to miss that line, getting into one, I could probably get around them. So I did, I pushed the envelope just a little bit and regretted it. So I drug the brakes and let him get back ahead. Uh, just cause there's no way I want to take the lead, but yeah, you certainly saw correct. Well, man, check your flag in, in hand for race number one for the war hurts, war hurt horse dirt car series man so congratulations still got a very long uh, race to go usa speedway is next how do you like that track uh if we're being honest i love that track a lot of people don't um it's a little tricky to roll the bottom there and kind of keep your left side tires in the moisture and um 
I, I really enjoy it. So I really, really am looking forward to going there next week and, you know, just seeing how we can run. My goal obviously is to make, you know, each, make the race each week and, uh, and hopefully put on a fan or put on a show for the broadcast. Very cool, man. You got any uh, shout outs that you'd like to give? Oh yeah. hundred percent. I got to thank you guys for the broadcast. I got to thank Brandon Freeberg for putting this whole series together. It's a really awesome league and I look forward to running these next, you know, 12 weeks from this point. Sweet. Um, I got to thank D1RT racing, um, Rocket Esports, uh, Eddie over at D1RT, Cole Cabre, Matt Logan, Scooter Black, Paul Holander, and then Rocket Esports, Brandon Freeberg, Tra uh, Travis St. Clair, Jason Salter. They're a huge help each week, and I really can't thank them enough for everything they do for me. Very cool, man. Well, we'll see you next Thursday night at USAE International Speedway, man, and a very, a very, very good 60-lap 60, 60 run here. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. Hope you guys have a good one. Thanks, man. John Ruggio Jr. going to capture that checker flag, man. What a race. He tried to capture that, capture the lead for a good uh, 55 laps, and he was able to do it on lap 56, it seemed like. So here's a final results up there on the race screen. Just kidding. That's the B main results. Here's a feature results right there now up on your screen. So John, Brandon, Kyler, those are the top three drivers that we just got done interviewing. Steven Gilbert back there in fourth place with Scott Smith rounding out the top five. So, man, cracking a top five out of 30-plus drivers entered in. That's pretty solid. Troy Vaughn, Larry, John, Desmond, Dustin rounding out the top ten. James Clossy of Chris Cox. He was in a wreck. Uh, is able to bounce back though almost finished up in the top 10 12th place finish not bad card in 13th jason corn thomas vickers paul travis cody cody was in a couple of wrecks i believe could be wrong don't think i am might be mostly time i am brandon 19th jesse wall blake dependent scooter black gilpin that was one of those drivers i was going to try to watch out for rocket uh, rocket one esports e driver uh, he had a pretty good heat main event fun to watch yeah he finished in 23rd then you have colin murphy back there in nice spot colin murphy was the last car make it in into the a main feature he started 24th and uh unfortunately he was he uh finished in 24th spot there for the 90 car so man overall great race race no number one this was a blast absolutely love these long a main shows thanks to everyone for tuning in here to whiskey Global underscore tv thank you all for the comments Reading through some of this, Matt George says, good run, hood up motorsports, all three drivers up in the top 10. So the hood up motorsports drivers came uh, came to play for sure. It was fun, man. So anyways, we'll be back next Thursday night with the Pro Dirt Late Models. Make sure you guys get tuned up for that. You can watch it here on, you, uh, on my Wisco underscore TV, Facebook, and or YouTube. And that's it, man. That's it. Lots of fun racing, some cool wrecks, some good wrecks. We didn't see a flip, though. That's the only thing I'm disappointed in. If we're going to have a wreck, let's try to flip one of these things. Until next time, everyone, please take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Enjoy iRacing.com. Be a nice person. Mean people, uh, they just kind of suck. So be a nice one. And dominate those uh, public lobbies, those official ra ra races. Till next time, this my name is Jake, Wisco underscore TV. We'll talk to you guys Thursday for the Warhorse Dirt Car Series presented by Diggs by Dirt One TV. By Dirt One Racing. <laughs>